There was a big turnout of fans waiting to catch a glimpse of their favourite riders. But we first spoke to the defending 125 champion, Paul Malin. Was he ready for the start of the new season? Yes, I am. I've, uh, my preparation's been real good this year. Um, I've been in the States for three weeks, been down the south of France and Italy for two weeks. So, um, you know, I had a race last weekend. My fitness uh, feels pretty good. The bike's going real well. So, uh, hopefully I get a good start today and uh, everything will be perfect for the first GP in Indonesia in a couple of weeks. A new team member this year for Catfin in Honda, Brian Jorgensen. I feel pretty good. I've done a lot of training this winter and, uh, like you said, I'm in a new team and it gives me good confidence. And uh, I like the bike. I'm a, when I was European champ in 94, I rode Honda and I'm back on Honda again, so I think it's going to be a really good year. Well, Brian Jorgensen, hoping for a good year. Here we go. Race one of the 97 season gets underway. These are the 125s and here they come. And it looks like Neil Shepard, number 26, on the Tim Brinton's Yamaha that may well have got the whole shot as they drop down the hill and it is indeed Shepard. That's Danny Tollett behind him. Where is Malin? There's Stephen Sword. There's Malin going through. And there's Cole Nunn. Well, well, well. And Jorgensen looks to have a problem. He's looking down at the side of the machine. This, the uh, one of the Cat Finnings pairings for 1997. And it sounds to me as if that machine won't rev out, but it's Young Shepherd that leads them away in this first 125 race. And look at Malin. He's going for second place. He's got the Liverpudlian Danny Tollip right up beside him. And it looks like Malin's going to take it. Yep. Elbows his way through. That's Jonathan Pettit, number 12, behind him. Here's Malin. And he's in the lead. Where is Shepard? Malin now goes to the front, continuing the way that he left off last year in his winning ways. That's... Tony Marshall on the ARD pocket phones. Yamaha, there's Pettit. And there is Shepard. That must put him down in around fifth now. Number 40 behind him, that's uh, Young Jones, the South Wales former schoolboy champion. That is 72. And this is 72, of course. James Dobb, back from America after four years. Mailing it is that has the front at the moment. And they're scrapping for, I would think, second or third place here. Tony Marshall, Pettit looks over his shoulder. Well, I'm not going to help you. There's Dobb. He will no doubt want to finish well up in the order from race one. But here comes Paul Malin. He does what he needs to do. Takes maximum points. 30 for race one. Second then, it was Suzuki mounted James Dobb. 27 points for Dobby. Looking back for third. And it's Tony Marshall. Great ride from the youngster. Mailing it is, then that takes the win. Now to the open class and to the man that's been away for a couple of years. Kurt Nickel, how did he feel? It was pretty good. Um, you're right, I won the, the first time the championship went like this with an open on 125. Obviously, I won the championship lots of times before that. Um, but to me, looking around here, I would say that the championship's probably got a lot uh, more professional and come a long way, even in the two years since I haven't been doing it, you know, looking at the, around the paddock at all the teams and everything. So it looks like a pretty good series now. Kurt Nickel riding that 360 KTM wants this number one plate for 1997. But one young man he needs to beat is Robbie Herring. Does he want to hang on to the plate? Yeah, I hope to hang on to number one plate. I changed to the uh, Tim Brinton Yamaha team this year and it's taken me a little while to get used to the bikes. The bikes are very good, but as always, whenever you change uh, machines, it takes you a while to get yourself accustomed to the new, the new bike. And uh, it's going good. It's still early days yet. There's a long way to go. So I'm hoping for a good result today and then to steadily improve throughout the year. Well, they're on the gate then for the first of the open races for this year. Here they come. And Nickel looks to have got a blinding good start. That was Carlson alongside him on the RWJ. Well, we've got an uh, M25 session here. That's Danny Smith, number 29. That looks like Brian Wheeler, number 19. Yes, indeed it is. But it is Nickel that leads. Morris is second. There's Herring. There's Carlson. And on the inside, the number five bike, the local guy. That's Mark Eastwood. But it's Nickel that leads. Round one here at Canada Heights. Here's, and Morris has gone down. He's collected Herring. There goes Carlson. Carlson goes to second then, Eastwood goes to third, Herring's picked himself up to stay in fourth place. And that was Warren Edwards behind him and Justin Morris has chucked it down the track again. 
Oh, maybe we should call him Super Glue Morris this year. This is not the way to start the British Championship. Well, we've got a little tussle on here. That's 55 going through. That's Michael Bergman with 25 behind him. That's Jeff Perrett. They're having their own little tussle, these two. Here's the four stroke of Perry Lease. And there is Morris. He's got Brian Wheeler 19 on the inside. And that looked very much like 43. I'm not sure who that was right behind that group. But look at this. Herring climbing all over Carlson. There is Eastwood. The crowd are watching this. What's going on? Oh, we've got a bit of a tussle. It looks like Eastwood has got himself tangled up with someone. On, he's got himself tangled up with the ropes. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This is not going to be good for Mark Eastwood. And he's not happy with the other rider. I suppose he accounts him uh, responsible for that. Here's Nickel. And Nickel then wins race one here at Canada Heights in the open class of this 97 Honda-sponsored motocross championship. Well, we dived down into the paddock and had a quick word with Mark Eastwood. What happened in that race? Well, it was about two laps to go and I was all over Carlson and I uh, felt pretty confident about passing him. And then, uh, as I went in, like the lap riders, there's so many lap riders and they're just getting in the way real bad. And I went into a bend and I shouted at the guy in the bend before and he didn't move and I went into the next one and he messed the rut up and pushed me wide and I just went over the ropes and the rope got caught in the rear wheel. Well, the crowds are certainly enjoying the racing so far. Here we go, the 125s back on the line for their second outing of the day. Who this time is it going to be that gets a hole shot? And it looks like Danny Tollett, 36, may well have taken the, the lead up the hill. They all appear to be safely around with David Harrison at the back. And it is 18, no, 16. That's Nathan Shelton. Well, well, well. There is uh, Craig Prattley behind Malin, this Malin, he's about four. Number 16, Nathan Shelton then. And he's got Paul Malin on that Cadbury's Bruce. And, whoa, that was close. Shelton lost it, but he certainly lost the lead. Malin said, thank you, I'll take it now. 44, that's Stuart Flockhart. And I think that is number 28. That may well have just gone down in a big heap and a hole there. It could even be 38. Oh, whoever. No, it's actually 28. That will be John Barford. There's Shelton, and that's Neil Prince behind him. Here's Prince, I think Prince has gone up in the second, he has. That's Shelton now down in third, so he's gone from first to third. Still a lot to do. If that was 38 in the 125 class, that was indeed John Barford. Couldn't recognise him sooner for all the mud on his plate, but it's Malin that takes the win then. Second win of the day for Paul Malin, that'll be 60 points to take him into the last race of the day, which of course will be the Honda Cup. Uh, Robbie Herring here down on the line then waiting for the second open class race. And the gate drops, here they come. Who this time is it going to be? It looks like Brian Steele on the 21 bike that's shot up the inside. Uh, they're all leaning on each other again, which is nothing unusual. And, well, Justin Morris, I think, is a casualty amongst that. But it's Kurt Nickel that leads them away with Jürgen Carlson. Then it's Steele, the Irishman. Then Eastwood. That's Warren Edwards, number 15. There's Edwards right behind his teammate, both on Wiseco Piston Hondas. That's Cooper on the Soko Kawasaki. He's closing in on those two in front. And... That's it, Bradley, I think, 17 that's just gone down. That hurt. There is Nickel. Carlson closing in on Nickel. The 360 KTM against the RWJ 250 Honda. There is Cooper. Now, Cooper, I think, may well have gone up to third. There's Carlson. Track starting to rot up now quite badly in the, uh, some of the corners. It's getting a bit missed as well. Here, then, is Kurt Nickel. Here is Carlson, so Nickel wins. Carlson is second. Well, maximum points so far for the KTM rider. Good start to the season for Kurt Nickel. Going into the last race of the day up against the 125s. Carlson then behind again in second place. So Nickel, Carlson, Eastwood, Cooper, Warren Edwards and Morris. We spoke to Robbie Herring. What happened in the second race? 
Um, I didn't get a very good start, but um, the rest is so bad out there when you're in the middle of the pack. If people stop in front of you, you can't go anywhere. And a, a gaggle of riders stopped in front of me in one of the corners, and I just I stopped behind them and I couldn't get out of the ruts to get out of the way. And everybody just came around the outside. And I got away, you know, virtually lost. Well, let's hope Robbie has uh, some better luck in the last race of the day. Here it is. This is the head to head, the Honda Cup. They are two winners of two races, Nickel and Malin. The gate is about to drop. It's got very foggy. So we'll be groping around in the dark here, surely. Someone's stuck on the line. Who's it going to be that will emerge from the mist? And it looked like Nickel there. Although it's difficult to tell from this angle, but I think it was Nickel. Well, the. That is Nickel. That was uh, Jorgensen at the back, but it's Nickel. There's Herring. Jorgensen is at the back. Carlson has now taken the lead. Carlson, Nickel, and Herring. Rob Herring getting a much better start in this one. There is Joachim Carlson. Kurt Nickel. He looks to be having a tr problem with that bike. I don't know what it is. Something sounds a bit strange. But uh, Herring is closing on him, so we might see a change soon in second spot. There is Morris. That was number 40. That was uh, young Mark Jones. And the uh, lead stays the same. Second the same. Herring is there, waiting. 32. Well, that was Jorgensen behind. I think that was 22. Let's get in. Hello, hello. We've got somebody else down here. And guess who it is? It's Justin Morris. Yet again, I think he's tangled there with Danny Smith. One of the uh, Team Cat riders. And Cooper. Yes, indeed. Paul Cooper is now up behind Kurt Nickel. And I think Nickel now must be in third. There is the race leader, the Swede Jochen Carlson, the former British 125 champion. Heron is now up into second. So we've got to look back for third. If it's a green bike, it'll be a SoCal Kawasaki. It is indeed. And on board is the South African Paul Cooper. So where is Nickel? And the answer, I feel, is there in fourth. He has a problem with that bike. I think that could be a gearbox, judging by the sound that's coming up from the engine. I don't think he's going to finish this last race of the day. We'll wait and see. Oh, and Herring's got a problem. He was in second, not anymore. Carlson it is that takes them to the chequered flag. He wins the Honda Cup. The last race of the day, now Carlson, Cooper second, Malin on the 125 third, then it was Hewitson, Wheeler and Neil Prince on the other 125 was fourth. That's the overall of the 125 class. Malin, of course, taking 85 points. The overall of the open class, Carlson on 84 points. That's a good start to the season for the Swede. Round two then, we're down here in dusty Devon and you can see it's... Uh, very, very hot, and the watering facilities here, well, uh, I'm not saying too much about this. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Those that were there will remember, those that weren't will see. Anyway, we dived into the paddock, we spoke to Neil Prince. Yeah, I mean, I had a good resort at Canada Heights. Um, Paul was obviously riding good, but if I felt, as, I felt as if I got out the gate with him, I could have probably given him a run. You know, that's what I would have liked to have done, but I was starting too much in the middle of the pack and having to come through, and when I got through, he had such a like lead, I had no chance of doing anything about it. Well, with Paul Maley being an absentee here today, gives this young man a chance maybe to take the lead in the championship. Number eight, Craig Patley, his teammate also not here today, suffered an injury at the previous round, and of course James Dodd, there's 18, that was Tony Marshall, and here we are, we're on the gate, heads turned, that's Mike Church there, standing there sucking his thumb, I think. And away we go. Well, you'll see what I meant by the uh, the dust. <laughs> it's already quite uh, nasty, and we've got the first race underway. Oh, Ricky Priest. He's had a poor start, but who have we got that heads them down the hill? It's Craig Prattley on the Suzuki. Prattley it is. That looks like Stephen Saw 30 behind him. And uh, 22. Well, that... I'm not sure whether that's Mark Hucklebridge. I think it is. But look at this. Young Craig Prattley is on a real blinder here at the moment. He's had some up and down seasons over the last couple of years with injuries. But, oh, dear. Brian Jorgensen, the captain and rider. Well, yeah, we can do, Brian, is push it back to the paddock. I suspect that's got dust in the airfield or somewhere. Not much you can do about that. The bike has obviously stopped. Craig Prattley it is that leads them through. 
Looking back for second place, and I think that was Stephen Sword just flashing through your picture. There is Neil Shepherd, number 26 on his back. That was Neil Prince up the hill. And here comes Carl Nunn, cat finning for this year. He's had a terrible start to this race, but just look at the lead. Already Prattley's got Sordi behind him second. Who's that behind Sordi? And I suspect that is number four. That's Mark Jones. Mark Jones, the uh, last year a schoolboy champion. British 125 riding for the first year, and he's going great. There's Princey. Not able to capitalise at the moment with the absence of Malin and Dobb. And Stephen Sword on the MJ Church, Holt JCB Kawasaki. He's having a tremendous ride. Down the hill they come. It's corner to corner stuff. 18, young Tony Marshall on the rostrum at Canada Heights, hoping to get maximum points here this weekend, but it's not going too well for him at the moment. As the rest of the field charge around the track, there is Ricky Priest trying to make up spaces. There's Neil Prince, a young man from Wrexham in North Wales, a former British 125 champion, riding the TRS Honda for this year. And here's the race leader, number eight. It's Craig Prattley from Finstock in Oxfordshire, another former top schoolboy rider in his time, an ACU schoolboy champion. And he is putting on a tremendous... Dis There's Rob Hooper. That's his team boss. Obviously very happy to see his only man that's racing here this weekend doing so well out there in front. No better place to be. Someone's walking up the track there. Not sure it is. Ah, now this looks like Nathan Shelton. Number 16, that's Shelton. He's got a problem with that bike. And all the waving in the world is not going to help that. Here comes Prattley. He's going to win race one here at round two in Devon. Behind him, second place, it was Stephen Sword. Shepard came through to third, then it was Jones, Pettit and Kelly Swanson. Came home six with 19 points. Well, this was the first of the open class races. Here they go. It's a mad dash for that first corner and will just disappear. Rob Herring stuck on the gate. Well, that's given him a mountain to climb, but who is it that comes down the hill first? And it is the number 11 bike of David Campbell. Campbell, Carlson, then Nickel behind him. So Campbell on the 500 Honda. That looked like uh, Brian Steele there on the 21 bike in about fifth place, but it's Campbell. He will have got the whole shot and the 25 quid I think they get for the whole shot at this championship this year. Sponsored and donated by CAS. But Carlson is now second. So there goes the 500, then it's the RWJ 250, then the 360 KTM. As the rest filter through the dust, down the hill they come. It looks to me like maybe, no, it's still Campbell, Carlson and Nickel. Does sound like a firm of solicitors, doesn't it? And that to me looks like number 19, that would be Brian Wheeler in fourth place. Warren Edwards there, along with his teammate, Mark Eastwood. What have we got here? And it is still David Campbell. He's having an inspired ride at the moment. Carlson the Swede. Nickel still third. We're looking back behind this group. For the rest that fight through, there is Justin Morris. He has now got Mark Eastwood and Warren Edwards behind him. And we've got a challenge on here. Can Campbell hold on to that lead? Look at Nickel climbing all over Carlson. Running into the back of that 360 Skymask KTM and uh, Nickel still hasn't managed to find a way through. He has another go here. Look at Carlson. He wants the lead and Campbell refuses to budge. The extra power of that 500 is doing just enough to keep him out there. There's Herring. Picking his way through the stones and the dust. There is Campbell. And Nickel has gone second. Carlson now down to third. We've got a real scrap on here. But look at Campbell, he does not want to give this away. David Campbell, former Scottish champion, riding his little socks off. You can't fault this one for effort. Campbell it is, 11 coming through. Riding the Bike Sport Honda from Newcastle, sponsored by Gavin Linscott. And Nicol, 
wants that first place. His second tired of eating the roost from David Campbell, and Nicholas got it. Nicholas says, I've had enough of your dust, sir. I'd like to lead. You can eat some of mine now. So Carlson will no doubt set about trying to get past David Campbell. We've got a crash here. That's 63. That's Gordon Crockard, the young Irishman, new on the scene for British Championship racing this year. There's Nickel. He leads. Best place to be in these conditions at the front. Carlson has now come up into second. Where is Campbell? And there he is. And oh, dear. Oh, whoa, whoa. Campbell has stalled the bike. And Cooper crashes into him. Mark Eastwood nips through on the inside. He can't get it started now. That's 500s for you. 17, that's uh, Ed Bradley recovered from round one from that shoulder injury. But there's Cooper, the SoCal runner. He's got Mark Eastwood on the Wiseco piston right behind him. Well, it's a Wiseco piston inside the Honda engine, I should add. 21. Brian Steele with Herring there. Um, we've got a problem here. David Campbell, I think, has got a flat front tyre. Yes. Well, there you go. That's the way things go in motocross racing. The mechanics looking a little anxious, but it is going to be Kurt Nickel, I think, that is going to take the win here. He cruises around the bottom corner. Nickel then, 30 points, race one win, first one of the day. The Swede Carlson behind him, then Morris, then Mark Eastwood, Paul Cooper and Warren Edwards. And we went across to speak to Paul Cooper and to ask Paul exactly what he thought about the Swede Joachim Carlson and could he beat him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Joachim's going really well. He's had a good start to the year. Um, he had a very good ride last week in the World Championship, but I definitely think he's beatable. I mean, everybody's beatable and I think we can beat him through consistency and just being there every race. Well, no doubt he can. Well, here's the young man that's flying the flag for Suzuki. That was Craig Bradley. Neil Prince. Shepard there, number 26. And 28 beside him, Barford. And that, I would say, is number two. Here's Cole Nunn in concentration there for the next race. Here they go. The gate is about to drop, and they're off. Disappearing into the uh, dust once again. They're down the hill. The charge is on. Shepard is there. Looks like Hucklebridge on the 22 bike also there as well. And Brian Jorgens has got a much better start this time. And hopefully the bike will uh, keep running. But the amount of dust that's about, I'm not at all surprised that we get a bit of air in the filters. Or a bit of dust if it comes to that. Now they drop down. They know they're going to start sorting themselves out soon. It's still, as before, 34 leads, 22 second. Over the big jump they come. We're looking further back to see who's where. There's Craig Pratt, he's back in about fifth. Ricky Priest was there. And it's another poor start for number four, Neil Prince. Such an opportunity being missed here by the young Welshman to take the lead in this championship. The absence of... Paul Malin with a back injury, and of course James Dobb with a thumb injury, I think it is. There is Princey. Got a lot to do, and we've got a change at the front. It looks like Shepard. Yep, Neil Shepard takes the lead. 22 back in third place, 34 sandwich between those two. We're here in Devon, dusty Devon. 36. Now that should be the Liverpudlian Danny Tollett. It is indeed. He's had a poor start. He's way down at the back. That's the race one winner. Number eight, Craig Prattley. He's got Ricky Priest right behind him. Another good scrap on here. Shepherd it is that comes down the hill on the Tim Brinton's Yamaha. He's got a chance here to notch up some maximum points. 30 and second place at the moment, number six now. Cat Finning Honda of Brian Jorgensen, the Danish rider. The crowd are lapping this up. Weather is lovely and hot. A bit dusty at the moment. Track's very stony, but uh, nevertheless, we seem to be soldiering on. First and second then. Shepard and Jorgensen. And it looks like Ricky Priest has come up to third. Yes, indeed. Craig Leheath Kawasaki, there is Jorgensen, and here comes Priestie. He's on a roll. 
I suspect he may well get himself up into the uh, second or may even take the lead before the end of the race. The rest of the gang come through there. Stephen Sword had a good race in race one, not going so well in race two for him. And that looks like Carl Nunn that's right behind him. Yes, it is, and Carl Nunn actually goes past him now. So Nunn, he moves up a place. There is Neil Prince, the former British 125 champ. He's not having the best of days here today. And they've got a scrap on here, the two youngsters, Stephen Sword, the former schoolboy champion against Carl Nunn, another former great schoolboy rider. And there's Princey, he's closing on those two. So the chance for him yet. There's Mark Jones, that's last year's schoolboy champion. We've got somebody off at the bottom here. I think that may well have been 74 down there. And that would be Adam Lyons if it was. Look at Priesty. He's past Shepherd. And we've lost number eight. There is the very unhappy face of Craig Fratley. Well, he won race one. He's not going to get any points from race two. So let's sort this one out. There is Carl Nunn. He's closing on third place man, Brian Jorgensen. Teammates, Cat Finn in Hondas. And Ricky Priest is in the lead. Well, well, well. Neil Shepard relegated down to second. Third then for Jorgensen. It should be fourth for his teammate, and it is Carl Nunn. But look at Priesty on that Craig Heath Kawasaki. Didn't have such a good outing at round one at Canada Heights, but certainly all gone right here today in race two. He's going to come up to take the chequered flag and, of course, the 30 points. Shepard then finished second. Jorgensen was third, Nunn fourth, Stephen Sword was fifth, and Mark Jones was in sixth place. Whoa! As the open class riders come back onto the line, for their second out into the day. There's Robbie Herring. 21. That's the young Irishman. As the gate is about to drop, and it does. There they go. Looks like David Campbell. No, it's the four-stroke of Perry Lease that gets the whole shot. Oh, and someone's gone down. That's Carlson. That was an end over end. He's very fortunate not to get collected by anybody else just then. But it's Leeski on the 49. Husqvarna that leads them down. It looks like Campbell behind him second. Then it was Morris, I think. Or is that Herring? No, it's Herring. Nickel down in about sixth place, but here comes Leeski. That thundering big Husqvarna, just listen to it. But the battle is on for second place, and I think Heron is hanging on to it at the moment. No, it's still number 11, David Campbell. Heron in third. Campbell out having an absolutely inspired out in here this weekend, despite the conditions. There's Nickel, looking a little bit uh, darker than he originally started. There's Cooper. They've put a bit of water on the track, and that, of course, mixed with the dust, has now uh, created what you call a dust bath. A bit of a liquefied dust bath. Cooper looking quite clean at the moment. Any changes at the front? No, they're not. I cannot believe that Perry Leesk is hanging on to this at the moment. That big four-stroke is a big handful around this track. But he hangs on. Campbell hoping to keep an inflated front tyre for the remainder of this race, and he should do. Have to run the tyres a little harder when it's stony. It's very stony here. Lots of bricks and rocks being thrown up at people, including ourselves with the cameras. Oh, someone's got a problem there. Cooper comes around. That looked like Brian Wheeler. And who's this? And that is Justin Morris. Another wretched start for Morris. Round one didn't go too well for him. Herring's going out. Herring's been hit, I think, by a stone. He's holding that left arm. I would say he's been clouted by rock. Well, we've got a tussle on here for the lead. Campbell goes through on the inside. Can Leesky shut the door? Leesky comes back across. There's Cooper. It really is. That was Brian Wheeler. And there is number 73. Now that is Gary Hughes. And Campbell has got the lead. David Campbell of Scott has finally found his way past the thundering full stroke of Perry Leesk. But it's all interesting now because can Nickel get past the two of them? 
He's on the lighter 360 Austrian KTM. Here comes Campbell, goes for a, a pull off on his goggles. Now let's look behind Campbell. What's Nickel doing? Has he managed to find a way past that thundering four stroke? 600 cc's of bellowing machine. Golly, it's shaking Nickel's teeth at the moment. Nickel goes to the inside, but it's still Campbell. Oh, and I think Nickel has nipped through on the inside. He has. Yes, Kurt Nickel goes through. Lease gets put up, and then we've got, we lost Morris. This is Justin Morris. He's been off at the bottom of the hill, and I think he must have gone head first right into the big water and all. Oh, they're all decided to fall on each other. Get off. Can I have my bike back? That is Carlson treating his uh, rivals in the way they deserve when they lay their bikes on his. Here's Nickel. I think he leads. Yes, he does. Nickel leads. Campbell down to second. It's the Husqvarna of Perry Lease for third. Then it's Cooper. Is it Cooper? I think that was Cooper going through. But a tussle on here. Brian Wheeler having a really good scrap with someone. It's a bit difficult to tell who's who at the moment. The dust is that thick. We had fog and mist at Canada Heights, and we've got dust and stones here in Devon. But it's Cooper. Now, is Cooper all over David Campbell at the moment? Or is that Brian Wheeler directly in front of him? Let's get a look. It looks like Campbell. I think it is. Someone's on the floor. And I think that's Nickel. That looks like Kurt Nickel. So an uncharacteristic mistake there from the KTM rider. And Cooper may well now have the lead. I'm not sure. We'll sort this out as it comes around. There is Campbell, so it was Cooper. I would say Cooper now leads. Campbell is second. Well, oh, disaster for Kurt Nickel. There he is. He's picked it back up again, and he's back on Campbell's case. So that could be Nickel third. A few more laps. He may well get the lead back, but he hasn't got long to go. We're in the closing stages of this race. And just look at this for a scrap, eh? You can't get any better than this. That's Paul Cooper. He's going to come round, I think, to take the chequered flag, and he does. A win then for the South African. Kurt Nickel finally finished in second place, and we spoke to Kurt. Kurt, what happened? Uh, some complete prat just pulled all the ropes out just in front of me. I was just cruising around, nice wind. He just rode straight in the ropes and pulled straight in the track. Nothing I could do, silly. Another lap, Kurt, and I think you'd have got the lead back again. Well, I probably would have done, but all the bloody ropes were all wrecked around my wheel and everything. It just took me ages to get the bike going. Nah, it does annoy me. Well, unlucky for Kurt Nickel, but lucky for Paul Cooper. We asked him how he felt. Yeah, it was a little bit unlucky. Um, I was a little bit lucky, but they always say it's good to be good, but it's better to be lucky. So it worked out for me. Uh, first race wasn't so good. I struggled really badly with arm pump. Um, it's a funny old, funny old track, a lot of stones and that. And then that one, I just concentrated on staying relaxed. And I got into second, and then as soon as I got into second, there was Kurt on the ground. So it definitely went my way. Well, for Cooper, a good result, 30 points. Nickel then, then Campbell, Wheeler, Perrett and Liske on the four-stroke, finishing in sixth place. Last race of the day, this is the Honda Cup. Who's it going to be? A mixture of the uh, 250s, 500s and the 125s. It looks like Ed Bradley, number 17, that's got the whole shot. Cooper was amongst that group. Little 125s will be screaming away around this track. We've got somebody stuck there. I think that could be David Campbell. It is. Oh, that's cruel luck for Campbell. But it's Bradley, and there's Carlson with him. Carlson is going for the inside line up the hill, but Bradley says, uh uh, that's mine. Eastwood chasing Cooper. Nickel. Oh, Nickel. He's got the lead. We're looking back for second. It's Cooper. Then it's Carlson, one, two, and three. We're looking for Nickel. There he is. He's going to take the win then in the last race of the day. This is the Honda Cup. He's going to get the 30 points. Cooper, second. He followed home by Carlson, then Mark Eastwood, Brian Wheeler, and Jeff Perrett in sixth place. While the one, two, five result went to Neil Shepard, Carl Nunn, and young Stephen Sword. So Shepard, highly delighted that Malin wasn't here to uh, give him a run for his money. Shepard there confirmed, Jonesy in fourth, Jorgensen in fifth, and Ricky Priest, despite that win, finished in sixth with 40 points. The open class went to Nickel with Cooper, Carlson, Wheeler, Perrett, and Mark Eastwood with 46 points in sixth place. 
Well, from the dust and the stones of round two, it's round three here, Cullum in Oxford. And Paul Merlin back for round three, but he had a terrible start to his Grand Prix season. Yeah, I mean, all I can do now is um, salvage what I can from the, champ you know, from the Grand Prix uh, campaign. Um, like I say, now I'm second place in the British Championship. I actually missed the second round. And, um, you know, to be six points down now is like uh, a blessing in disguise, I think. So if I can get my head down today and then start the ball rolling from today, hopefully next week for the British Grand Prix uh, at Fox Hills, everything can be sort of like, you know, started from a roll today. Well, Neil Prince, and there is Paul Malin. As he said, it's not been the best of starts for his Grand Prix season with that back injury. Steve Dixon, his mechanic, obviously offering those last little bits of advice before we get the start of the race. Carl Lund beside him. Here we go, gate drops. And they're off. Up the hill here at Cullum for the first time. And it looks like Tony Marshall that's got a good start here. It is Tony Marshall that leads. Jorgensen. Then it was Hucklebridge behind him. As the rest of the riders come screaming down, but it's Neil Prince that leads them through. Then it's Tony Marshall, then it's Paul Malin, then Jorgensen, then Carl Nunn, then Shepard, then Hucklebridge, then it's Dobby. Dobby's back as well. And that's Stephen Saw, but it's Neil Prince, the Welsh wizard on the TRS Honda that leads now this man, Paul Malin, on the Cambridge Bush Yamaha. We've got a scrap on our hands here, the ARD pocket phones, Yamaha of Tony Marshall there in third. But Princey, he's no stranger to being at the front. 1989 schoolboy champion, 1995 British 125 champion, mailing behind him. We've got a scrap on here, and there we go, the <laughs> falling over each other, these two are. Well, that's Nunny and Jorgensen, and the two cat finning guys, trying to trip each other up. There they are again, they're, they're closing on Marshall, but here comes Dobby. James Dobb, recovering after that hand injury that he collected at round one. But we've really got a scrap on here, it's Prince that leads Malin. And Malin is determined to take this one. And Jorgensen has come through, he's passing Tony Marshall, or is he? Marshall fights back on the outside, but no. The Honda has just the edge. And Malin's got into the lead. Prince down into second, Malin leads. It was only a question of time that Steve Dixon tuned Yamaha doing the business up front. And Princey, his mechanic Nick does an excellent job for him. Jorgensen, and now it's Nunny, his teammate. And there's Dobby, Dobby's closing on the two. Cat Finning boys, we could see a scrap to the line here. There is Marshall, dropping back now, he's got uh, 26, that's Shepard, 22, Hucklebridge behind him. It's a cracking race, this. And look at James Dobb, he's closing on those two in front. He needs to get points back on Paul Malin. Stephen Sword on the MJ Church. Holt JCB Kawasaki there. Riding with Holt JCB for this year. And it's nice to see the lad back on the bike. Check a flag then for Paul Malin. He wins race number one here at round three in Cullum. But back for second, it's the Welshman, Neil Prince. And in third place, it's going to be Jorgensen. And indeed, yes, it is. Behind him four, it is Nunny. And then to the line. And he gives him the finger, James Dobb. Four years of racing in America. I bet he's glad to be back on home soil. Right, the first of the open races comes down onto the line. The gate drops and here they come. This will be again Nickel versus Carlson and there they are, the two on the inside. Now what can David Campbell do? He had some tremendous starts at round two in Devon. But it's Carlson, I think. Carlson leads it from Bradley on the outside, number 17. Where's Nickel? He's down in fourth. Oh, he got it wrong there. That was almost a tip over the bars for Nickel. You don't often see Kurt Nickel make a mistake. But it is the Swede, Joachim Carlson, on the RWJ Honda that leads. Bradley second. Here's the Swede. There's Bradley behind him. Then that looks like Justin Morris, number seven. Yes, indeed it is. 
Then it's Eastwood with Nickel all over the Wiseco Piston Honda. Nickel, the 360 KTM, has he got the extra bit of power up the hill? Yes, I think he may well have just squeezed past Eastwood, and he has. As they come back down the hill, it's Nickel that leads Eastwood. Now, what can he do about the riders in front? Over the big jump. Here comes the first two, and Nickel is up to third, and he's chasing Bradley in second. It won't be long before he gets on terms with Carlson. There is Nickel hunting, looking for a way past the man in front. Kurt Nickel, four times runner-up in the World 500cc Championship. Went to 250s and everybody laughed, but he finished fourth in his first year. That certainly put his critics to silence. He's up to second. Nickel second, chasing the RWJ man in front, Carlson. We have got a scrap on here. There's Herring. He's had a terrible start to this one. There's Eastwood. Remember, Canada Heights are Eastwood, and here comes Brian Wheeler. Yeah, and I think that's Gordon Crockard beside him. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Number 21, he has a problem there. That's Brian Steele as Daniel Smith, 29, comes up over the hill. Carlson, Nickel. We've got a scrap on between these two for this first race of the day here at Cullum in Oxford. Round three of this Honda-sponsored British Motocross Championship. Nickel down the hill. Who's behind him at the moment? It is Justin Morris, number seven. There is Eastwood. High-flying stuff here. Crowd are absolutely lapping this up. Mark Eastwood. Swanley and Kent, son of former great time rider Vic Eastwood. There's Nickel. Where's Carlson? Nickel's got past him. Kerr Nickel leads then here. Race one of the Open Class Championship at Cullum, round three here at the Championship. We're looking back for a second. Well, Herring has gone through. There is Nickel. Up the hill, no, that's not, that's actually Brian Wheeler, and that's Gordon Crockard, the Irish lad. He's only about 17 years of age, it's his first time racing British Championship, Gordon Crockard, and he's doing rather well. Carlson, now where's Nickel? Well, a problem for, oh well, he says never mind. Number 21, that was the bike then, once again, of the Irish lad, Brian Steele, overheated obviously. Carlson goes through. There is Morris and Nicoli, I think, is behind him. Brian Wheeler on that Wolf Sport, Bike Sport Honda. It's Carlson then that's going to take the win. Where is Nickel? We've lost him somewhere. And there he is. He's going to finish second. Well, we didn't see the mistake that came from the rider, but obviously he made one somewhere around the track. He let the, uh, the Swede through. Herring comes through, and Herring, I think, comes through to take third. So he's been a little silent throughout the proceedings, but sneak through there in the end. Well, this is the way to watch motocross. I don't know which AC official that is. It's just arriving. But nevertheless, we're back on the line for the second of the 125 races, and the gate drops. Here they come, up the hill. Whom will it be this time? It looks like Malin on the inside, or is it? That's Jonathan Pettit, number 12, on the outside, but I think Malin has done just enough to squeeze through. As they come down the hill, oh, somebody, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. that was very close. And no wonder he exits the track rather quickly. I thought he was about to lose his head, but it's Malin then at the front. That's where he likes to be. If he wins this one, it'll be two wins in a row. That'll be... A good result, considering he's scored no points from round two in Devon. So the Cadbury's Brute, Yamaha, Steve Dixon tuned, roars up the hills as the rest of them scrap for the remaining places. Princey just gone through. There's Pettit. I think that's Princey behind him with Shepard. Number 10 there, that's the second of the Skymast runners. That's Brian Bowes. And that was Ricky Priest, number 14. He's not had a good start to this day. Shepard, here's Malin, certainly stamping his authority, gets a 
a round of applause from one of the spectators as he comes through. Well, he hasn't won the race yet. Well, no doubt, I'm sure it's uh, only a question of time before he comes around and takes the checkered flag, unless he makes a mistake, which isn't usual for Paul Maley. Jorgensen, Nunny, teammate. That looked like Princey just flashing through the picture. That's Pettit, number 12, chasing Princey. And that's Shepherd behind him. Here's Malin out on his own. Jorgensen, second. And that will be Nunny behind him, his teammate, both with Cat Finning for this year. Team manager Dave Thorpe will no doubt be watching his riders very closely. Malin comes down clearly in the lead, but the scrap is on for second place between the two Cat Finning boys. Jorgensen leads none. Fourth. And that is Neil Prince. Behind him, Jonathan Pettit in fifth. Then it's Shepard in sixth place. Here is Malin, making easy work of this at the moment. No problems for him. And Princey going through. Now, has Princey moved up a place? I think he has. 44, that's Stuart Flockard. Another one of the graduates from the youth ranks of last year. But Malin down the hill again. This machine immaculately prepared by his mechanic, Mr. Spoons, alias Steve Dixon. Somewhat now a legend in the motorcycle tuning world. Princey, I think, has gone to second. I'm fairly sure of it. Malin is there. Are we going to see a repeat of race one? Or can Princey get on terms with Malin and give him a run to the flag? I don't think he will. He's about maybe eight, nine, ten bike lengths behind him at the moment. But we'll wait and see. There is Carl Nunn. Now, where is Jorgensen? There he is. So I think we've got a change for third. So it would mean Jorgensen third. Fourth, sorry. And uh, Nunny will be third. Shepard chasing Dobby. He's on a charge as well. This looks like Ricky Priest. Behind Priest, Tony Marshall. Then it's Stephen Sword. Mark Jones from South Wales, number 40. His first year at British 125 motocross. Championship racing, but here comes Jorgensen, number six. And he's got Dobby behind him. They're on to the penultimate lap. There's Nunny, number two. Son of rather well-known character, Stuart Nunn. Owns that circuit up at Middleton Hall. What a fabulous circuit it is as well. Shame it's not a bit bigger. There's Dobby. If it was, they could have British championships there. So Dobby, not a good start to the second race. From oh, Jorgens has been off the bike. There's Malin. He's going to come around to take the chequered flag. It's another 30 points for Paul Malin. That's 60 in all from this third round so far. It's Neil Prince that's going to come home and finish in second place. Now, who's going to finish third? Is it going to be Dobby? Yes, indeed, it is. What a tremendous charge through the pack from James Dobb. He really has worked hard for that. Gets a round of applause from our official finisher. Then it is Jonathan Pettit. But what happened to Carl Nunn? Well, we'll never know because this is the open race on the line. Their second one of the day. Looks like Perry Leesk on the Husqvarna 600 has done it again, but Nickel has decided he would rather lead than eat the roost from the back of that Husqvarna's wheel. He'll leave everybody else to have that pleasure. Looks like Justin Morris may well have nipped through into second place. Yes, indeed he has. Down the hill, it's Nickel, Morris. And I can see Eastwood, or is that Edwards? Oh, Carlson got it wrong there. He almost tipped him over the bars. I think he caught somebody's back wheel. That will have unnerved him a little bit. Here is Nickel. He leads it. We're looking back for second. 360 KTM, Kurt Nickel riding for Skymast for 1997. And it's Herring, I think. Herring is up to second. Then it's Morris. There's Campbell fourth. That was Bradley. Carson has just gone through. And there he is. So Carson's had a bit of a wicked start to this one. Warren Edwards going down the hill. That's uh, the big old husky there of Perry Leask, and he's got Carlson right behind him with number 25. Jeff Perrett there. Oh, 27, that's Gary Hoptrow. Teammate to uh, 
number three, Paul Cooper, but it is Nickel. And we've got a change again for second because Herring goes back a place and Morris goes up to second. So it really is swip and swap. And no doubt about it, Carlson is making progress. David Campbell is in that group, so we could see some sparks fly yet. Nickel, Morris, Herring. This is a cracking race. The KTM leads the Honda and the Yamaha. Nickel down the hill. Nickel on the Sky Mask KTM. Morris on the RWJ Honda. Herring on the TBC Yamaha. Really is a cracking scrap. And Herring's off. Robbie Herring makes one of those too often mistakes. And he's dumped it whilst in third place. Well, what a shame for the pitch. And look at that, Brian Wheeler having a right good scrap at the moment with Jochen Carlson. And no respect, no respect at all from Wheeler. He says, I've got a 500, I'll just blow you off. Ed Bradley, number 17. Who is it that's behind him at the moment? It's Wheeler and Carlson. So Wheeler has still refused to move over. Eastwood. And that's Herring behind Eastwood. Not a good scrap going on here. Cooper's just gone through. 63, Crockard. That looks like David Campbell 11 just gone through, but we're with Jochen Carlson. And he's, I think, now managed to put number 19, Brian Wheeler, to bed, so to speak, because that's Ed Bradley he's just overtaken. 29, Daniel Smith. That's 45 going through. That's Herring with his sleeves rolled up. Well, you need to do more than this, Robbie, if you want maximum points. Herring down, Nickel up front, Morris second. Carlson looks now to have gone to third place. Eastwood could now be up into fourth. There's Crockard, the young Irish lad. And that's Mr. Payton, along with uh, Nick Fisk and, of course, our old friend Ron Calloway. Commentators extraordinaire here today at round three. Now we're looking down the track. This looks very much like a scrap on. Nickel comfortably there in the lead. Only has to hang on to this without any mistakes. Morris, he's still second. Doesn't really have to do anything too spectacular to finish in second place. Nickel is well ahead of him at the moment, but he's got Carlson climbing all over him. Is Carlson going to nip it at the checkered flag? Here comes Nickel. He's going to take 30 points. And he does comfortably. Now, who's going to finish second? We're looking back down the track. It's going to be Carlson. Yes, we've lost Morris. Carlson comes through second. There's Nickel. Well, I don't know what happened to Justin Morris, but Joachim Carlson finishes second place in 27 points. Please. Well, there's Justin Morris explaining what happened. I uh, suspect it was a machine failure, which is unusual. Never mind. Better luck in the, uh, the, the next race. Uh, here we go. This is something. It, hydraulic clutch is what Dave Nichols is explaining. The Kurt, Kurt Nichols bike has got a hydraulic clutch. Now, I didn't know that until then. There's... Keith Thorpe, Dave Thorpe's father, working on uh, number two Carl Nunn's machine. And they're getting ready for the last race of the day, which is the Honda Cup. Here they are. 13 and 99, Kurt Nickel and Jochen Carlson. The gate drops, and it's mailing up the inside. Dobby right beside him. But looks like Nickel has got the whole shot. No. Oh, 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 that was close. That 49 bike of Perry Lees. I think he whole shot the race, but he almost tipped him over the bars when he landed off that jump. But it looks like Carlson that's got the lead. Yes, Carlson leads. It's Morris second, Nickel third. And then that looks like Malin, and then Dobby. So we've got the 2125s two two up against the 250s and 360 KTM. And there's Neil Prince. He'll be third of the 125s. But they all score 30 points down, irrespective of their CC or category that they're racing. Carlson, Nickel. Malin is third, look at Malin. He's on a one, two, five, and he's absolutely blitzing the bigger bikes at the moment. Look at Malin, 
No respect whatsoever for Kurt Nickel on that 360 KTM. Nickel looks round as if to say, well, how did he do that? Well, it didn't last for long because Paul Malin, in his exuberance to take the lead, crashed out at the top of the jump. Fortunately, not too badly injured. But well, we spoke to Steve Dixon afterwards to find out what the injuries were. But there's Jürgen Carlsen. He takes heat win at the last race of the day. Uh, apparently, he's just like bruised his toes and that, so maybe fine for Fox Hills. That's what I've just heard. But I mean, as you can see, he was going really good. He was like really flying. He was only six, seven seconds behind uh, Carlsen with four laps to go. So, you know, he could have been on him, I reckon. Um, you know, he passed Kurt, left him, and put the job on him. It just goes to show that it's one, two, five or whatever. Paul Malin's got the ability to do the business. Princey took the overall with Dobby in second place. Carlson, Nickel, Morris, Herring, Crockard and Wheeler, they were the top six in the open class. The Honda Cup went to Carlson, Nickel, Herring, Dobb, then Morris and Prince. That could well have been Paul Malin at the top of the slot. But we came to round four here at Ellsworth Motor Park in Cambridge. And we spoke to young Ryan Vos. How was he after his recent operation? Um, yeah, I'm just about fully fit. Um, um, I'm not actually properly over it yet um, because where they actually did the operation, they went through the main uh, muscles in my back and um, it's, it's taken a lot of building up to full strength. Um, but as far as my breathing goes, it's um, you know a lot better than it, it, it was before I had the operation. Well, we wish him a speedy recovery. Let's speak to his team boss, Carl Jones from Skymast. Um, well, I mean, we was, <coughs> we was discussing it, uh, believe it or not, at Fox Hills last year at the Grand Prix. I was in the 250s, and uh, I've known Kurt for you know, about five years now, and uh, it really just gelled, it just came together. You know, Kurt was looking for a deal. I was looking for another rider just to up the profile of the team a bit. Uh, say a bit, and uh, it all just came together. It was, you know, I was comfortable with it. I was comfortable with, uh, retaining Ryan again, and uh, we had the backing from uh, KTM. So, you know, we just pressed forward. It, you know, from there, it just came together. Well, the one, two, five boys came down onto the line for their first race of the day. As the gate dropped, here they go. Who's it going to be to get to that first corner here at Ellsworth Motor Park? Probably this country's biggest outdoor supercross track is the best way to describe it here. Littered with jumps. Oh, it looks like Hucklebridge. And I would say that that was Jorgensen or even Marshall on the inside of him. Looks like Marshall. As they scream through, 18 Tony Marshall, 22 then 6. There's Dobby going through. That looked like Malin just going through at the back there. But it's Tony Marshall the leads from Mark Hucklebridge second. There's Malin. And you'll notice Craig Prattley amongst that group, but it is young Tony Marshall from Wisbeach in Cambridge that leads Brian Jorgensen the Dane. So we've got ARD pocket phones Yamaha versus Catvin in Honda. And young Marshall, probably one of the smallest competitors in this class, as far as height is concerned. But here they come through the whoopie doos Dobby is third. And this should suit Dobby down to the ground, this type of track, when you consider he's been racing in America for four years and has done a lot of supercross over there. We've got somebody down. I think that's Tim Heesman. Here comes the front two, and Dobby's up to second. He's got young Marshall just in front of him. Jorgensen pushed down to third, then it's Nunny, and here they come, through the whoopsie doos again. Yellow flags out, there goes Dobby, he's just gone through on the inside, I think, and there's Malin. And that was Tim Heesman that took a tumble through there. Pettit just going through. Ricky Priest, there is Neil Prince. Not a good start for him in race one. Craig Prattley, number eight. Better days were had at round two, down in the seven. Dobby leads. It's Marshall second, Jorgensen third. His teammate Carl Nunn behind him in fourth. Spectacular stuff here, just look at that. As Dobby winds that Suzuki up over the jumps. But here comes Paul Malin. Stephen Sword. 
Another rider, well adaptable. Oh, they've gone down. That is Marshall, I think, and Carl Nunn, I think, have just gone down. It is Marshall and Carl Nunn. Jorgensen has now got Malin behind him. So I think that's now a new second and third, because this is the man that leads. And up to second goes Malin. So the two Derbyshire men at the front here at Ellsworth for round four of this Honda British Motocross Championship. Neil Prince has got young Nunny behind him. That's John Barford, I think, behind those two. Got a good scrap on between these two riders. There is Dobby, and Malin is not too far behind him. Number 40, Mark Jones from South Wales. He really is proving to be quite a quality rider in this uh, first year of British Championship riding. But he's got these kind of guys to catch if he wants to go on top. Dob, Malin, Jorgensen now in third. We're looking back behind these group. We've got a bit of a tussle on here. A whole gaggle of riders, of which Craig Prattley is one of them. Here they come again. Stephen Sword, Hucklebridge, Shepherd, And then Prattley behind Shepherd. Yes, number eight on his back. 38 goes through. Kelly Swanson, that was. So Kelly Swanson... A little bit off the pace, but it's the chequered flag then for James Dobb. Paul Mail in second. Then it was Jorgensen, but this is the scrap on. We've got Nunny there, and I think that was Craig Prattley, and he's going to get beaten by Tony Marshall. He's not going to be pleased about that. Well, he went sadly wrong as he got into that left-hand corner, went over the berm, and Carl Nunn dropping a couple of places. Well, here's the open class race. Led to the line by 99, Yogi Colson. Then Kurt Nicholl and number three, the South African Paul Cooper. Here's Justin Morris. Second of the RWJ riders. And this is our old friend Spud, Brian Wheeler. And he'll give us a smile in the way. Yes, he does. 25, Jeff Perrett. And then Robbie Herring. Now, Herring should do well here at Ellsworth. It's his kind of track. He's got Mark Eastwood coming along behind him as they drop in onto the line. 17, Ed Bradley just comes around to uh, drop onto the line. Here we go. Open class, race one. That was Wheeler on the inside as they head down towards our camera position. Are they all safely around or have we got any fallers? No, it looks to be pretty clean at the moment. Who's it going to be? And it is Nicole on the 360 KTM. Not the best of bikes around here. And look at Perrylees. He's on a 600, Husqvarna four-stroke, and he's up there in second place. Well, Leeski, a former British four-stroke champion, he's one of these men that can ride just about anything if it's got wheels and a throttle and an engine. Leeski, 49, Husqvarna. They're scrapping for positions. Here they come. Nickel, Carlson, and thank you very much for standing in our way, Mr. Mechanic. And Herring is there in third. Herring, we said he should do well here. There is... Where's Nickel? Carlson leads Herring second, but Nickel's back to third. Well, 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 something must be wrong with Kurt Nickel's bike. For him to have dropped back that far so quickly. But Herring is put in, and he's gone through. Herring puts Carlson under pressure. The TBC Yamaha gets past the RWJ Honda. We have got ourselves a scrap and a half on here. Cooper, not a good start for him on the SoCal Quacker. He's going to have to work hard for this, but it's spectacular. Bradley with Dennis Hewitson, the other one of, the other one of two South Africans. That's uh, Cooper's countryman riding for Craig Laheath, I think, this year. And there's Brian Wheeler, number 19, decked out in that wonderful wolf sport clothing. Courtesy of Bill Brown. Cooper up along Brian Steele. And Nickel is cruising. That's got to be a problem with the bike. He looks down. There's something has gone wrong as Brian Wheeler comes through to take a position. But we've got Herring, Carlson, 
Oh, cracking stuff here at Ellsworth. Then it's Eastwood. Weissco, Piston Honda. And there is Steele. He's got Ed Bradley right behind him. And Carlson has gone back into the lead. Herring relegated back to bridesmaid place. Now, what can Rob do about this? There is Eastwood, and I think he's chasing Warren Edwards. There's Cooper. This track certainly sorts out the men from the boys. That's Crockard, number 63, Gordon Crockard from Northern Ireland. And the lad is beginning to settle down very nicely. Some of these tracks bear in mind that he would have never seen or ridden before. This is his first year at British Championship Racing. But it is Carlson, it is Herring, it is spectacular. This is what motocross is all about. No better track to come and see it on. No, it was actually Morris, not Edwards, that was on the inside. And look at Eastwood, launches himself past Morris. Oh, does he? Has he made it stick? I think he has. Carlson hangs on to the lead. Really spectacular stuff. Heron in second place. There is Warren Edwards. So many Hondas at the front of this one, with the exception of Herring. There is Eastwood. And I think that's Edwards on the inside of him. It is, he looks at him as if to say, how dare you? Well, the result went to Yoki Carlson with Herring in second. And the 125 boys came back onto the line for their second race of the day. Winner of race one, number 72, James Dobb. Ricky Priest beside him. And of course, Paul Malin here thinking, well, I need to beat my fellow Derbyshire men. Carl Nunn and Neil Prince with uh, Shepherd number 26. And Keith Thorpe gives him a pat on the back. Obviously, would rather his own man do the winning. Here we go. 1 2 5 race 2 gets underway. Head down towards the first corner. It looks like Malin has got the whole shot. The clouds are beginning to come over a little bit, so we might get some rain before the end of the day. But that looked like Malin that got the whole shot there. No! That is Jorgensen. And he's got, I'm not sure who's got behind him at the moment, looks like number 64. That would be Danny Smith if it is. Jorgensen then, Danny Smith second, was second. Jorgensen comes around that corner, completes the first lap. I have a feeling that Malin is now up to second, he is. Smith down to third, and I think it was Shepard. There is Neil Prince. Now, Prince, he should be at home at this track. And at the back, Carl Nunn, a poor start for the youngster. He's got a lot to do, but look at Malin. He's in the lead, I think. No, he isn't. Still second. I can see Jorgensen in front of him. Craig Prattley going through. Stephen Sword. Oh, we've got a mammoth scrap on here. That is Tony Marshall and James Dobb going side by side over the jumps here at Ellsworth Motor Park. This is a spectacular, and look at Cole Nunn, really giving the crowd what they've come here to see. Well, hold your breath. This is what they call racing at its best. Look at Dobby, he's climbing all over the youngster, Tony Marshall, and Marshall refuses to give way. Brian Jorgensen through the whoopie doos. Paul Malin behind him in second place. That set of whoops have caught out many a great rider, including Stefan Everts last year here in the British Championship. And Dobby's got past Marshall at last. Well, as far as Dobby's concerned, it's at last. Cracking racing. Look at Dobby go. He's absolutely scything through the back now. Jonathan Pettit just gone through. Looking back behind Pettit, there is Hucklebridge, the second of the Hulk JCB runners. There is Mark Jones. And we have got an absolutely blistering one on here. Malin is climbing all over Jorgensen. Are we going to see a pass here soon? Cadbury's Bruce Yamaha. There's Dobby. The Suzuki, the Hooper Suzuki man, really winding the bike up around here. And Malin has found the way through. He takes the lead. Jorgensen relegated the second. Mailing leads. Where's Dobby? He'll be the next man along after Jorgensen, I suspect. There's Jorgensen. Now that's Nathan Shelton. 
He's been a little quiet so far this season. Second of the TRS riders, the uh, teammate really to Neil Prince. There's young Craig Prattley. His teammate, of course, being James Dobb. Now, the crowd are really soaking this up. Wonderful racing. That's what they come here to see. And no better place to see it than here at Ellsworth Motor Park. Mailing. And look at Dobby. He's all over second place, man. Jorgensen, can he get through? Are we going to see Malin versus Dobby to the checkered flag? Dobby goes through. It was just a question of time before he made it stick. And <laughs> look at Jorgensen. He's decided, well, he'd rather have that second place back. Here comes Malin. Oh, that was close. He got the front end of that cabbage bush yam down a bit quick there. But Dobby's coming through second behind him. If he had wing mirrors on that bike, he would see that yellow 72. But Jorgensen certainly isn't letting Dobby get too far away at the moment. Small mistake from Dobb and Jorgensen, and we're back through again. There's Dobb. There's Jorgensen. As they come around by the finish sector, through that little set of stutter bumps. Over the finish area. And Rob Hooper watching his two men, but it's going to be Malin that takes the checkered flag. It's going to be Dobb, I think, taking second place. It is. Jorgensen should take third. There he is. Well, that was really nail-biting stuff as the open-class riders come down onto the line for their second race of the day. Carlson and Nickel hoping this time to get a finish. DNF race one, zero point score. Brian Wheeler on the inside. Away they go. Who's it gonna be? Gets the whole shot this time. Looks like the four-stroke of Perry Lease. How does that man make that bike go so fast? Somebody on the floor, can't see who it is. Don't think it's one of our front runners, but look at Leitsky. Hey, he puts the rest of them to shame. That's, I think, Nickel behind him in second. Nickel going for the lead. Leitsky says, oh, no, you don't. I've got 600 cc's under this petrol tank, and you've only got 360. Well, that bike, I can assure you, is an awful lot heavier. It won't be long, and it isn't. Nickel is there. He's made it stick. He leads. Eastwood, Morris, Carlson, Edwards, Leeski. Out goes number 73. I think that was the lad that may well have crashed at the start. And if that's the case, it's Gary Hughes. As they come around, it was Nickel that led them. There's Carlson. There's Eastwood. But I didn't see Nickel then. So he may well have lost Kurt Nickel for the second time. There's Herring. Robbie Herring, considered to be one of Britain's top supercross riders at one stage. Then Warren Edwards sort of put all that to pay at the uh, first round of the Birmingham Supercross some years ago. There is Mark Eastwood, teammate to Warren Edwards. It is Carlson that leads. We have lost Nickel again. I don't know what's happened. I think that could be another mechanical failure for Kurt Nickel. Carlson, the Swede then. Eastwood behind him second. The scrap is on them. Warren Edwards, Justin Morris, and Rob Herring. Blistering stuff. There's Edwards, the man that really gave Rick Johnson a run for his money at the Bear. Well, I said Bear. He's done it at the Bear in Paris, but he gave him a run for him on his money at uh, Birmingham some years ago. Spends a lot of time racing in Germany. Does Warren Edwards? There's Herring. Change of machines for 1997. Off Honda onto Yamaha for this year. There is the man that rides the 500, the Gavin Lon Linscott Bike Sport Honda. It's young Brian Wheeler, he's got 29. Daniel Smith behind him. There is Cooper, number three. Sokel Kawasaki. And I think that was Dennis Hewitson just in front of him. Oh, we have got a scrap on here. Herring is now climbing all over Edwards. Are we going to see a change of places before much longer? I wonder. Edwards really knows how to launch a bike around a supercross track. And Herring has gone through. Herring has made it stick. Edwards is down one place. There is Carlson. He leads this comfortably. Kurt Nickel is now back in the paddock with a failed machine again. That's twice today the KTM's let him down. That's 
very unusual. Look at Carlson. So smooth and confident around here at the moment. Isn't making a mistake. Not a foot wrong from him. And Herring's gone. A, Herring's got a problem. As Edwards goes back past him, Herring looks to be retiring. Here comes, well, he might well have clashed with Cooper because Cooper's got a radiator cowl hanging off. That could have been a clash between those two. There's Carlson, unaware of the uh, action and the thrills that are going on behind him. He looks confident to take the chequered flag, and he does. A big wheelie in celebration. Who's going to finish second? There is David Campbell. Well, he wasn't second. Justin Morris. There's Warren Edwards. It's going to be Edwards, I think. Or is it Eastwood? Eastwood, I think, is going to finish second. Well, there's Justin Morris. And there is Warren Edwards. Well, it was so rapid, this finish. Well, there's Harry. Just making those uh, minor adjustments as the riders, the top 20 from the open class, top 20 from the one five class, go head-to-head -head in this Honda Cup at the end of the day, and it's raining, as you can see. It's actually chucking it down. This is going to make the track very slippery. We could see one or two problems here for some of the riders. You can hear the rain on our camera covers. It's Eastwood then that leads. We have no Kurt Nickel in this race because he didn't score any points from either of the first two races, so he doesn't qualify for the last race. He's packed up and gone home in disgust. Look at the rain. You can hardly see the riders. It is absolutely chucking it down. It's torrential. It's such a shame. It's been such a beautiful day here at Ellsworth, and the weather has spoiled the last race. There's Carlson. There's Brian Steele. There you are. If you fancy a swim, there's your opportunity. Malin with Tony Marshall beside him. You can see by the way the riders are attacking the track. They're doing it very gingerly. Steele with uh, Cooper coming through behind him. Then it's Carlson. Then it's Edwards. A lot less quicker than they were before. Daniel Smith. And that looks like Malin. And it is. There's Cooper. Ow! Oh, Carlson has lost it. We were saying that this uh, weather could lead to one or two problems for some riders, but I didn't expect it to be Carlson. Look at the rain. It is absolutely bouncing down. Mark Eastwood, number five, Wiseco Piston Honda, Swanley and Kent. He's got Cooper and the South African behind him on the Soko Kawasaki. It is treacherous out there. There's Warren Edwards. He's no stranger to the rain. There is Malin, first of the 125s, and he's got Carlson back behind him. Carlson has picked the bike up, but it's Eastwood. Mud splattered, he's even got time to give us a wheelie. There he is. So the 125 result went to Dobb, Malin, Jorgensen, Marshall, Nunn and Stephen Sword. Then for the open class, it was Carlson, Eastwood, Morris, Cooper, Edwards and Heron. No score for Kurt Nickel. Two mechanical failures put him way out. The Honda Cup went to Eastwood, Morris, Carlson, Cooper, Smith and Herring. None of the 125s are in there. Well, round five, the weather was a little different here at Wakes Cone. We spoke to James Dobb, who is in a very confident mood. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, uh, everyone's pretty close in practice. Everyone, the times are pretty much the same because there's really nothing to the track. It's just real fast and wide open. So that's good for me because it'll create some close racing, which I like more so than the spread out stuff. Dob in a confident mood. We spoke to Rob Hooper, team manager. How was the season so far? Yeah, it started off uh, very difficult. We had a lot of problems. Um, getting used to, to Jamie really working with the team and, and a few problems with the bikes. We uh, we did a lot of work early on, but we were going seemingly in the wrong direction, but we, we got that right and things have picked up an, an awful lot uh, since the end of May, really. Well, Paul Maley, no doubt, uh, has other ideas. There's uh, Neil Prince beside him. That's Brian Jorgensen, the Danish rider, riding for Catfin in Honda. And this is the start then of the 125 race one. Up the inside goes Malin. Have we got everybody safely around? I don't think we have. No, there's Dobby, he's on the floor. Well, after all that confidence, he goes and crashes his brains out at the start of the race. But nevertheless, don't worry. 28 going through. Yeah, that's just John Barford. Nice to see John at the front. He's got Malin behind him. 
But it wasn't long before Malin decided to demote Var for the second place. That, I think, is Jorgensen in third. There is... No, it was Nani! And Jorgensen and Prince. So there's the top four. There is Malin, where he likes to be at the front. The question now is, where's Dob? His fellow countryman, so to speak, from Derbyshire, both from Derbyshire. There's Neil Prince. Nunny was in second. Oh, we've got a scrap on here, and that looks... Well, I'm not sure who that to. I think one of those was Neil Shepherd. I'm not sure whether that was... Uh, sorry, that was Barford. Barford and Shepherd going shoulder to shoulder, and Barford's been around too long to get intimidated by that. There is Dobby. He's picked it up off the ground. He's on a mission now to catch the guys in front. We've got uh, Neil Prince coming up and past Brian Jorgensen. And Dobby climbing all over young Tony Marshall. Well, he might be small, but stop picking on him. He's a very nice lad. Here they come. Ooh, Dobby on the Suzuki going after that ARD. Pocket phones Yamaha. Can he get past him? I think it's only a question of time. One lap to go. It's Malin that leads. Number 20 looks to have a little problem there, and that's Jamie Breeden on the Kawasaki. Taking it quite gingerly over the jumps. Maybe there's a problem with the bike. There's Dob. High-flying speculator. He's passed. Carl's, he's passed Jorgensen. There's Malin. There is Carl Nunn. Now, who's third? And it's Neil Prince. Prince comes home third, so that's a good result for him. That would have salvaged some points back. It's Dobby in fourth. And I can only assume that it was Brian Jorgensen that came home behind him. Dobby then heads back to the pits. And this, believe it or not, is Paul Cooper. And that's his mechanic in front, Carl Presswood. No need to apologise to me. On the line, Nickel. 63, Crockard. Wheeler. We run down, there's Carlson, Herring, Bradley, Perrett, Hoptro, Edwards, Eastwood. And there's that ever intimidating four-stroke of 49 Pirellis. Here they come. And it looks like Cooper that may well have got the whole shot, or is it Nickel? Think it's Nickel. Fairly sure it's dead, it's the nickel it is, Cooper second. Then I think it's Carlson or it's Heron on the inside. As they flash through our pictures here. High flying stuff. Really is spectacular this here at Wakesco. And they do a superb job of the circuit. Work very hard, but it's nickel. Cooper on the inside, Carlson, then it's Eastwood, then it's Heron. We're in for some sparks here today between these guys. Daniel Smith, who's he got behind him? That's Justin Morris. Morris with a poor start. He's had so far a very up and down season. Cooper, Eastwood, Herring. And number 67 now. Someone, I'm not sure who that is. 63, that's Gordon Crockard. We know that guy, he's been around now since the start of the season and he's going quite well. Nickel, he's in the lead. Hoping this time that the machine will keep running. Carlson, chasing th second place man, that's third. Fourth then for now, Cooper. He's dropped back a place. Then it's Eastwood. There's the chequered flag. It's going to be, I think, a win for number 13. Yes, indeed, Kurt Nickel takes the win. Herring goes through and takes second. Carlson comes home in third, Cooper comes home in fourth. That was a cracking race. Well, the crowd enjoyed it. They're going to get across the track now to pick up their positions for the next race. And there's a face I recognise, or a pair of legs, Trevor Atfield from the BSMA. 125, second race of the day. Here they come. Are they all going to get safely around this top corner? Oh, no, no, no. That looks like Ryan Vose, number 10, that's taken a tumble. Yeah, that's Rosie, second of the Sky Mask Runners. And it looks like Malin, and it looks like Nunny, side by side. There is Jorgensen, this is racing at its best. Handlebar to handlebar stuff, this is what you came to see. Nunny, Malin, Jorgensen. 
38, Kelly Swanson, Tony Marshall behind him. High flying stuff here at Wakes Cove. Over the jumps they go. We get to see a good view of the belly pans on the bike. Ricky Priest, not a good start for him. Having to really wind up that Craig Heath Kawasaki. But look at Nani. He's determined he's going to keep mailing behind him at all costs. But that is a tall order at the best of times. There is Jorgens, and so you've got the two cat winning boys with the Cabris boost Yamaha as the sandwich villain. And Shepard elbows his way past Tony Marshall. And Nunny makes a mistake. Is Mailing going to get through? No. Can Jorgensen capitalise on that? No. They're still one, two, and three. Blistering stuff. And there's Dobby, he's fourth. Mailing's through into the lead. Look at Dobby. He's come from nowhere. We really have got a blistering race on here. These one, two, five boys really giving it all. Mailing leads. It was Nunny second, it still is, and Dobby goes to third. Dob knows he's got to beat Malin, he needs the points. What a blistering race this is. 44, Stuart Blockhart. 86 there beside him. And there's Dobby. Where's Mailer? And the answer is just there, so Dobby is up to second. Nunny down to third, Jorgensen fourth, and look at Dobby. He wants to win this. And Mailer looks at him as if to say, ha, you, you don't, this is going to be my 30 points. And Dobby's all over him, he's going through on the inside. Mailer's coming back on the other side, now he's made it stick. Dobby goes into the lead, Mailer relegated to second place. Well, if you wanted to see some racing, this is where to come to see it. Dobby wins. Ricky Priest going through. I think he was almost a lap down. But Malin disappointed with that. Well... Malin explaining what happened there, but nevertheless, here's the open class boys on the line for their second race of the day. Are we all safely around? It's Nicole and it's Carlson, I think. And I think that's Justin Morris that's trying to poke his nose through the middle. Here they come. Who's it going to be? It's Nicole. Who's behind him? Now, that wasn't Carlson behind him. Well, look as the rest come charging through, but I have a feeling Carlson wasn't in second. There's that four. Well, you don't need to see that four stroke. You can hear it. That is Morris, I think, in second. Yes, indeed. That is Eastwood third. There is Carlson, I think, with Bradley all over him. There's Nickel. He leads it. Well, there's Brian Wheeler. And he may well be up there. Well, we've got a yellow flag being waved here. We've got a problem. The race has been stopped. Someone has taken a tumble in the finishing area. And it's uh, an ambulance job. I don't know who the rider is. But uh, nevertheless, the uh, crowd are looking on. We'll get them back to the start. And we'll do it all over again. Here they come. Nickel up the inside. Morris beside him. Carlson on the outside. Herring was there as well. Yes, it's Nickel. And is that, yes it is, Campbell beside him. David Campbell, well he really has been quite a revelation this year on the 500 Honda. But Nickel leads them through. Second race for the open class. Where's Carlson? And that's your answer, second. And going after Nickel, but that is the number 11 bike of David Campbell on the inside. And I think Nickel's gone down a place, he has. Carlson looks to have gone to the lead. There's Morris. Not such a good start for him. There's Eastwood. Full start for Mark. He'll have to work hard for maximum points. But there's Carlson. There's Herring. Now, where is Nickel? Bit of chopping and changing going on here in this race. From corner to corner. Herring should do well here. His kind of track. Herring leads. Well, well, well. Herring leads. Where's Carlson? Where's the... There's Carlson. Where's Nickel? There he is. Well, we don't know which corner to look at first at the moment. There's Eastwood, he's got Cooper behind him. So it's breathless stuff, this. You really don't know which corner to look at because they are changing so rapidly. There's 
Cooper still behind Eastwood. Those two having their own little private war. And here comes Nickel. And there's Carlson. So Nickel has come back into the lead. I believe this. He takes the checkered flag. Carlson second. Where's Herring? There he is. Herring back to third place. Well, I believe it. Well, 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 they swapped places, I think, about three times during the course of that race. <laughs> what happened? I've got my, um, the burn goes underneath the rope. And the, uh, the knobbly caught the rope, and it wrapped around my back wheel and stopped the bike dead, and I just flipped me off. And uh, I tried to keep the bike running, but it stalled, so I had to kick it. It did go in again, but it's my own fault for riding so wide. Well, that's the answer as to what happened to Robbie Herring. He rode wide, got caught up in the ropes. Kurt Nickel. Well, he was lucky. He won the race, despite being back in third at one point. Steve Dixon there momentarily with Paul Malin. Here they go head to head. This is the Honda Cup race. Nickel on the inside. There is Malin as well. Oh, they're all on the floor. That's Herrin, Marshall, Bradley. Oh, they're going to have to work hard. But here comes Nickel, and look at Malin. Malin is either second or third. He's third behind Morris. He's got Colnum behind him. Well, this is breathtaking stuff. Absolutely incredible racing. There's Dobby. He hasn't had a good start. He's way down the field. He would have liked to have been in the top two or three. He looks over his shoulder as if to say, well, who's behind me? I should worry more about who's in front of you. Well, it's not going to be that young man. Tony Marshall on a cruise back to the pits. Nickel. Who's behind Nickel? And it's Carlson. One and two. Who's behind Carlson? It's Cooper. Well, yeah, Paul Cooper's in there. And that looked very much like Mark Eastwood behind Cooper. That will put him four. Well, it was Carlson that went through and took the win. Unbelievable stuff at the end of the race. Carlson nipped through, took the win from Kurt Nickel, and we spoke to Colin Reed. Not been a bad day. Um, could have been better, unfortunately. We'd hoped to win the second race, but Yoki got a puncher in the second race and he was losing traction out of corners and uh, he rode for safety in that one with his second place. So we're happy. We're going away from the day with 85 points in front and um, we're happy. And so speaketh God of RWJ. Dobby, Nunn, Malin, Shepard, Pettit, Marshall. That's a familiar top three already. In the open class, it was Nickel, Carlson, Cooper, Herring, Morris, and Mark Eastwood with 44 points. It was a cracking dice racing. No one can deny that. In the Honda Cup, Carlson beat Nickel, then Cooper Dobb was the top 125, Morris, and then Cole Nunn. Well, on to the next round here at Hawkstone Park in Shropshire. Round six, and we spoke to Kurt Nickel. I think it's going to be very tough. Um, you know, I gave him a lot of points at Ellsworth um, in the middle of June. Now, with 85 points behind, I think it's going to be very difficult to catch up. Um, but from my point of view, all I can do is try and go out and win the races and then uh, see what happens with Yoki. I certainly would like to keep the points uh, closer than they are now, so that at least we go to the last round with it still a little bit open. Well, with Nickel knowing that he's got to do the winning here today to beat Carlson, if he stands any chance of retaining, or not retaining, but taking that to Open Class Championship for 1997. Here's Malinen coming down onto the line for Heat 1 of the 125 class. James Dobb, there beside him. These are the two that are going head to head. There's Colon, an outside chance maybe of clinching second in the championship, we'll wait and see. Local track for this young man, number four, Neil Prince. This is where he won his 95 British 125 championship. The gate is about to drop, here they go at the Sandy Shropshire circuit. And it looked like Tony Marshall that got the lead, but no, it's number 20. He leads them, Jamie Breed, and got a tremendous start on the Kawasaki. But not for long, because through came Dobby. The sand circuit here will certainly sort the men out from the boys. And way down at the back, captain in Honda, Brian Jorgensen, a terrible start for him. Neil Prince with Ryan Vos with Malin behind those two. So Malin also had a bad start. Where's Dobby? He's out there in the front somewhere. There's Neil Shepard. There is Malin to the delight of the crowd, beginning to make up places. But he's got a lot of work to do. Well, there's one young person who isn't that interested, really. Let's go and play with my friends. Oh, Sean Lawless from TMX. He's no doubt ready to scribble something down of interest. 
And there's Dobby. He leads. Well, if you wanted to claw back your chances of winning the championship, this is the way to do it for Dob. Shepard going through. That looked like Stephen saw behind him. There is Malin. Up the big hill here at Hawkstone Park. He has got a lot to do to catch Dobby. A lot he's doing as well. There's Tony Marshall. He's eaten his way through quite a few riders. Malin is certainly on his way to picking up some maximum points, if not complete maximum. But there's the man that takes the 30. James Dobb wins then race one. Neil Shepard comes home in second place. Stephen Sword, number 30. Hulk JCB. Kawasaki, good result for him. And there's Malin. And Tony Marshall hung on behind Malin for some extra points. Well, there's Carlson, number 99. He looks at the start. This is the first open race of the day. This is the Rock Oil Race and Technical Support Centre. Rock Oil beginning to make a show in back again in motocross, which is nice to see the Warrington-based company. Carlson, then, with the man beside him that he has to beat, Nickel. Rob Herring with Mark Eastwood, number five, now. Well, there's Nickel making those little adjustments as they line up on the start here at Hawkstone Park for this sixth round. Here they go. And it looks like Justin Morris that's got the whole shot. Carlson behind him. There is Cooper. And Cooper, I think, has got... Uh, there's Nickel. Now, Nickel's not had a good start here. Terrible start for Nickel. Well, 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 I believe this. Carlson. Cooper, Eastwood, Morris. So there is Carlson. He leads. Cooper second. Eastwood is third. Morris is fourth. Well, you wouldn't believe this if you were seeing it. Well, where is Nickel? He needs to be up there. There comes Brian Wheeler, number 19. And Heron is behind him. Heron's had a poor start as well. Uh, you really can't count Robbie out. But uh, anything. There is Nickel! Terrible start for Kurt Nickel. Way, way, way down the field. We got a. That's Crockard. Just gone past Morris. There's Nickel. He's on a forward gallop at the moment. Now, this is how you go through the whoopie doos. Kurt Nickel showing his superior Grand Prix experience. He's rode many Grand Prix here at Hawkstone Park. There is Cooper. He's got Carlson behind him, so Cooper's in the lead. There is Mark Eastwood. There is Crockard. They really are getting this thing wound up completely. There is Cooper, and Cooper takes the win. Carlson takes second. We're looking back for third. And there is Mark Eastwood, and looks like Gordon Crockard has taken fourth. And there is Herring. Nickel is in there. Yeah, Nickel goes through. Well, not a good start for Kurt Nickel. It's a noise test then for Yogi Carlson. Well, you fancy having a drink? Well, they are. It's free of charge. High five. Performance nutrition. Please try free sample. What we did. Mailing goes onto the line. We're ready for the start. Here they go. And they're off. And it looks like 28 that's got the whole shot this time. 28 coming through. Yes, indeed, that's John Barford. There is Dobby. Neil Shepard behind him. And at the back. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. It was young Brian Jorgensen. There's Princey. And there's Mailer. And there's Dobby behind him. Well, Dobby didn't get the whole shot this time. But he's moving forward because that's Barford. 28 behind him. And there's Dobby. Dobby is winding this up, Mailer behind him, and Princey. So Dobb, Malin and Prince, the top three in this race. There's Nunny. Barford, Jonathan Pettit, number 12. The sound here at Hawkstone Park will certainly sort these boys out. Into the sand hole, out of the sand hole goes Shepard. There's Princey, up over the jump. Really winding this one up, Neil Prince. Now, where is Dobb? That's the question. There is Carl Nunn, under the bridge, around by the new part of the circuit. It's been changed here at Hawkstone Park for this year. 
Look at this, Neil Prince is leading Mylin. We've seen this once before. Can Mylin get past him? There's Pettit. And that looks like Tony Marshall, number 18, behind him. Oh, that was close to Marshall. Nearly lost the front end. Well, you can stand there and uh, shake. Yeah, I don't know what he's looking for. Can't even remember his name, but he's a world-famous motocross marshal. Does a bit of commentary as well, apparently, he tells me. Prince is still leading Mylin at the moment. John Barford, number 28. Stephen Sword, number 30. The sand here at Hawkstone is really beginning to sort them out. There is Dobby, winner of race one. Is it going to be win race two? It is. So Dobby takes 30-30. That's 60 points. Mailing coming through in second place. Princey coming through, I think, in third. Good ride from Neil Prince. It's his home circuit. Lives about 14 miles down the road. Here comes Carl Nunn. Not such a good race for him. Well, you can't have it all your own way. Gate drops. Here they come. It's that old Husqvarna. Everybody dives away from the uh, side of the fence. It's that Perilis Husqvarna that's uh, sped out in the lead, but not for long. Nickel is there. That looked like Eastwood behind him. There is Morris. Not a good start for Justin. But there is Nickel. Looks over his shoulder. Yes. Look who's behind you, Kurt. It's that damn Swede again. Justin Morris giving David Campbell a hard time. There's Herring. And Nickel fighting for the championship, but I really think that Carlson has got this sewn up here. There is Leeski on the good old thundering four-stroke. And Mark Eastwood right up there behind his RWJ friend. Justin Morris, and there's Rob Herring. It's not been the best of years for Herring. I think he can safely say that this man here is going to walk away from here today as the new British Open class champion. There is Nickel. He can do absolutely nothing about it. Carlson on the RWJ. Honda has got this sewn up for 1997. There's Herring, that number one plate. Well, enjoy it for this meeting and one more, Robbie. And then you're going to have to hand it over. Campbell, he's had a tremendous start this season. A fantastic bit of racing. There's Dennis Hewitson. Haven't seen too much of Dennis. It's not been the greatest of years for him, but I'm sure he's adapting to the British tracks. There's his fellow South African, Paul Cooper, on that SoCal quacker. And there's Herring behind him. And here comes Carlson. He's got Nickel behind him. Are these two going to go for this? Is Nickel going to try and make the last race his? Certainly trying, no doubt about it. Nickel is on his way up the big hill, chasing the RWJ Honda, but I don't think he'll catch it. Cooper coming through. That looks like Crockard behind him. The Irish lad, he's had a pretty good British season, considering this is the first time I think he's raced at Hookstone Park. Herring. On the number one, Tim Brinton, Yamaha. Here comes Carlson. There's the checkered flag. There is Nickel, and Nickel knows. He knows he's lost the, he's lost that chance of winning the British Open Class Championship for 97. There's Cooper, a former British Open champion. Crockard. Well, it's a good finish from Crockard. There is Herring. Well, I think he realised a little while ago that he wasn't going to make it. Well, we've got uh, a couple of lads here. That's uh, Carl Nunn. I'm sure who he's talking to. There's Neil Prince with Kurt Nickel beside him. This is where they go down to the line. James Dobb and Paul Malin. These are the two that really are going head-to-head -head now. Carlson takes them down to the line for the last race of the day. They're on the gate. And the gate drops. Here they go. Who's it going to be that gets the whole shot? And it is Brian Wheeler. He's got David Campbell behind him. There's Campbell. Then it's Eastwood. There's Perry Leesk. Nickel has just gone through. There's Carlson. He's had a lousy start. And so has Herring. Really lousy start for Rob Herring. Oh, Stephen Sword. He's got Carl on behind him. There's Justin Morris. He's not had a good start either. It really hasn't been his year this year, young Morris. But Brian Wheeler, well, what are you going to do about me, though, he says. Campbell, Eastwood, there's Dobby, 
Nickel behind him. That was Crockard. Perry Leeson was there, and I think on the inside was uh, Carlson. Well, oh, no, no. Shepard, 26 0. Shepard walks away. That's the end of his day for today. There is Eastwood. There is Nickel. Now, where is Brian Wheeler? Is he still there? He was leading quite convincingly at one point. I don't think he's there anymore. There's Carl Nunn going through the whoopie doos, showing them exactly how it should be done. There's Nickel. And I think Nickel's in the lead. No. Because that looks like Carson on the inside of him. It is. Carson has come through. Nickel is behind him yet again. Eastwood is back to third. It's beginning to get very interesting here at Hawkstone Park. Uh, they're swapping places. There is Herring. And there is Carl Nunn. Into the sand hole they go. There is Dobby. Second of the one two fives. I don't know where Malin is. Well, speak of, and he arrives on the scene. Paul Malin not had a good start in that one. There is Neil Prince. He's got Herring behind him. Prince, he knows his way around this track. He's ridden here many, many times in the past. And here is Mark Eastwood. And Mark Eastwood looks to have got past Nickel. Yes. So Eastwood inspired at the moment. He won the... Well, it's going to be Carlson then that wins the last race of the day here at Hawkstone Park. Eastwood coming through, I think, to take second place. We're looking back behind him. It looks like Nickel is going to take third. Well, what can you say? There is Carl Nunn, first of the one two fives. The results then, Dobb, Malin, Prince, Sword, Marshall and Nunn. In the open class, it was Carlson, Nicol, Crockard, Cooper, Herring and Eastwood. That makes Carlson the British open class champion with one round left to go. Honda Cup went to Carlson, Eastwood, Nicol and Dobb was the first of the one two fives home, then Crockard and then Carl Nunn. Well, we came to round seven here at Finn and Lee, just outside Doncaster. And a splendid circuit it was. Honda, the sponsors of the championship this year, certainly well pleased with the way things have gone. There's Chris Brawson. Done a wonderful job all year as Chris, the uh, paddock coordinator. Well, if you're hungry, the food here was certainly very good, that's for sure. Well, the teams that have supported us here on this British championship, the likes of uh, Olin, that's Andy White's new truck. Skymast Antennas with, of course, Kurt Nickel and Ryan Vose, RWJ with uh, Yoki Carlson and Justin Morris. TRS with Neil Prince and Nathan Shelton. Hulk JCB with Stephen Sword. Well, of course, Caterpillar, well, they've been here as well with uh, Jorgensen and Nunny. But uh, there's Nunny's bike, but it's going to be, it's a, it's a championship anyway for Carlson. Second was Kurt Nickel, but the man in third place was Paul Cooper. Did he think he could catch Kurt Nickel? No, realistically there isn't a chance unless he has a major disaster and doesn't finish any of the races. Uh, apart from that, really I've just got to consolidate my third position. I think Justin Morris is, um, I don't know, about 30 points behind me. So as long as nothing goes wrong, I should, you know, I should manage third. But really what I'm looking to do out there is get as good a result as I can. You know, not really too worried about the championship because if you don't win, uh, the other places aren't that important. Well, you might be wondering what that's all about. None better for Yamaha. Uh, Nunny is to join number one Cabris Boost man Malin next year and the Cabris Boost team with Steve Dixon as sort of team manager. And nevertheless, he's here today. This is the 125 race last round and it's Stephen Sword. Stordy it is that leads them through. And that's one young man that's really gained a little bit of performance during the course of this year. He had a bit of an off time last year, but he's back on form and it's nice to see. And we've got a change. It looks like Shepard that's gone into the lead. Yeah, Shepard leads on the Tim Brinton's Yamaha. Or is it? Because there's Sordi. No, I think Stordy still leads. There's Malin. What has happened to Shepard? He led momentarily. Well, we lost him, but there's Sordi. Here comes Malin. And there's Shepard, third. There's Jorgensen, fourth. So we've got a cracking battle on here. Oh, spray me in sand, thank you. Dobby, it's very deep here. Oh, Carl Nunn, it looks to be out. He's watching the procession go around him, but there's nothing he can do about it. 18, Tony Marshall battling with 72. James Dobb, there is Mailer. He's leading. Looking back for second place. 
Well, there is Shepard. There's Dobby. I'm not sure whether that's second or third. We'll check it out next time they come round. So there's Malin. We know he leads. Who is it that's second? And it's still Stephen Sword. Jorgensen's still there third. Malin it is. There's no doubt about it. Oh, someone's got himself nicely caught up in the ropes. There's Dobby with Rob Hooper giving him instructions. And that looks like Dave Thorpe helping whoever that is out of the ropes. Poor little person. Looks like number 88. Well, if that's the case, that would be David Willett. The question now is, will he or won't he go any further? <laughs> Here they come. Over the big jumps. The leader, Malin. There's Dobby. There's Malin. Down off the jump. He's going to win race one then. Here at Finnanley. Dobby's going to finish second then. He managed to pull through to that second place. Tony Marshall has finished third, fourth then for Stephen Sword and fifth for Brian Jorgensen. Oh, the open class boys, 99 there. That's Carlson coming down onto the line. Already crowned as the champion. Here we go. Open class race gets underway. The question now is what can Carlson do? Is he going to go out for the win or is he just going to ride for the pleasure? Oh, look at Brian Wheeler. He puts his hand up as if to say, yippee, I've got the whole shot prize. That's all he comes for, you know. Eastwood, not a good start for him. And look at Carlson, he's down at the back. Well, well, well. Banging things down, I think that's his clutch lever. He's knocking back into shape again. Well, the crowd are loving this. We're going to have a real tussle on at the front. And that, that's uh, number seven, that's Justin Morris. But it's Nickel that leaves. Morris seems to be out. Nickel comes through in the lead. It doesn't matter what he does here today, he can't win that championship. There is Eastwood. Wheeler on the inside. There's Gordon Crockard, number 63. He really has rode well this year, the young Irishman. There is Wheeler. He's got Crockard right beside him. You. They are giving this some stick at the moment. There is Carlson. Trying his hardest to get back on score. And he's lost it again. Carlson's crashed. Well, 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 the action is really thick and fast. There's Nickel. That looked like Herring going through. It is, Herring is behind Nickel at the moment. So Herring has barged his way through in the second place. There's Eastwood. Eastwood in third. Some cracking racing going on as they pick their way through the back markers. Nickel needs to make sure he finishes in front of Cooper because Cooper has a possible chance of uh, taking second round, but it's unlikely. There's Herring third. He's got this pretty well sewn up. He's lost his number one plate for next year, but I'm sure he'll be back to do things all over again. There is Nickel on his way, I think, to the checkered flag. There he takes it. We're looking back for second place, man. That's Herring. Rob finishes in style with one more race to go, plus the Honda Cup. Looking back for the next place, man. It should be Eastwood, and it is. Eastwood, no doubt, will be riding with Weiss Co. Pistons Honda next year, 1998. Well, it's the turn of the one 2 fires yet again. Their second race, there's Malin. He needs to finish in front of that man, James Dobb. Dobby closing in on the points. The crowd eagerly awaiting to see the outcome of this race. It's very much between those two. They're on the line. Who's going to get the whole shot? They're laying on the back of their bikes. Oh, it's like road racers going down there. And it looks like Stephen Sword again. Looking for Malin, I'm looking for Dobb. But Stephen Sword has got a tremendous start. Not the best of starts. And there's Malin. He's at the back. Holy smoke, Paul Malin's making it hard work for himself. There's Stephen Sword. Oh, this boy and man is really beginning to shape up at last. He's had a wretched time this last year, but he's really starting to get his act together. Here's Malin, scything his way through the slower riders. Whoa, very nearly chucking himself off the bike there. Through the back wheel into that berm, and almost again. So Malin, frantic, riding possessed at the moment. There's the man he's got to get on touch with. 72, James Dobb. And I think Dobby's got the lead, he has. So Maley needs to get up into a major point-scoring position. There's Neil Prince behind Jonathan Pettit. 
It really is frantic stuff for Mailer. Tony Marshall going through. Not a good start for him. Jorgensen. Over the jump comes the Dane. It's not been too bad a season for him, but he would have liked to have won this championship. Neil Prince. And he's got Malin behind him. Well, we've seen these two coming at it before. There is Dobby. Looks to be cruising at the moment, and he does indeed cruising in to take the win in the second race of the day. Sawney chases him home in second place. Then it was Jonathan Pettit. There is Neil Prince. Robbie Herring sitting here contemplating on what could have been. That number one plate, he's lost. And he's lost it to that man. The Swede, Yogi Carlson, he'll take it for next year. Kurt Nickel will take the number two plate. The next man out, Paul Cooper, won't catch him. They're on the gate. Here they come. Penultimate race of this 97 British Honda sponsored motocross championship gets underway. Who's it going to be? Oh, it's done it again. Wheeler puts his hand in the air. That's another 20 odd quid to take home. Well, Brian Wheeler, always a joker. Dennis Hewitt's a number nine there. It's Wheeler leading, Nickel leading, I think that was. Oh, there is. Yeah, that was. Well, there is Carlson. I think that was Morris, and then he had Eastwood behind him. They came through so quick. It is Morris, number seven. He's right alongside Nickel, and Nickel is now leading. Wheeler back to third, fourth then for Eastwood. Campbell, and then on the inside of Campbell, it was the new champion, Carlson. Then Cooper, and look at Cooper. He's having a try. He maybe, I don't think he can take that second position off Nickel, but he's certainly having a go at it. He doesn't need to do any more than he's doing. He is the champion. Joachim Carlson, Cooper. And I think Cooper's going for the win. He wants to go out in 1997 in grand style. Nickel behind him, now second. There is Gordon Crockard, and he's ridden a very accreditable year. First, second going through. Cooper then takes the win on the penultimate race. Nickel finishes second. Irrespective of what happens, there's your champion, 99, the Swede, Joachim Carlson, RWJ Honda. Eastwood coming home on the Weissco Pistons Honda. Well, Dobby, 72, he needs to win this one. He needs to finish in front of Mailer. He wants Mailer really not to finish at all. Well, I doubt that's going to happen. They're on the start. Here they go. The gate drops away. They go. Dobby's stuck on the gate. Dobby's jumped the gate or tried to. It hasn't worked. He's hit the gate. Well, that's it. That's a number two plate for Dob next year. Malin has got it, and he knows it. Here he is. He celebrates the new champion. And how does he feel? Uh, well, I'm relieved, to be honest. It's all over. Um, first race, I had a 21-point lead. And I had a good start in the second race, and then threw it away on the second corner, front end, washed out. So I uh, had it all to do. Let's see it again. 1997, 125 British motocross champion Paul Malin. Let's ask James Dobb what happened in that last race. Uh, it didn't start off too good. I tried to jump the gate and I hit the gate and then uh, it was just an uphill struggle. I caught right behind him. And then when I got within a couple of seconds, it started to die on me. So I just had to coast it home and uh, finish where I did. 1997 Open Class champion Yogi Collison. We asked him how he felt. Yeah, I feel really good today. Uh, actually, I, I won it already last week, but today it's the final round and I uh, had a few crashes today, but I won the last race and I felt really good. I'm really happy for me and for the team, for everybody who's involved. It's, uh, it's a great victory for us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this 1997 look at the Honda British Motocross Championship. Join us next year in 1998 from myself, Kenny Kay. Thanks.